Hey guys, my name is Zach, and today we'll be checking out a money saving kilowatt hour meter, so stick around and enjoy. Alright, guys, before we kick off this review, let's first go over a few specifications. This can consume a maximum of 15 amps and 1,980 watts. This meter will display five units of measure, which include watts, kilowatt hours, amperage, voltage, and elapsed time. It will also calculate how much money your devices are costing in real time, as well as how much money it will cost in a week, month, and year. There is an added motion sensor to detect movement, and I'll get more in depth on this later. Finally, you can also view how much CO2 emissions you are outputting by the pound. Moving on to the physical side of this product, you will find one plug, a detachable screen, and four buttons. From left to right, you will find the CO2 cost and meter buttons. On the top, you will find a power button. Alright, so the main point of this product is pretty obvious, to save money. There are a ton of settings that you can modify to your personal need to help you do this, and I'll be going over what they are and how you set them later. They also included a lot of instructions in the box, so be sure to thoroughly go over them to ensure you know how to use this product. Pretty much the rest of this video is going to be a tutorial, so don't expect it to be a fun and exciting watching experience, but it will definitely help you to decide whether or not this is the right product for you. One last thing. A very looked over issue that most people don't realize is that everything still consumes power even if it's off. This product will help to eliminate that issue. To begin, let's first begin talking about how to set the rate. This is probably the most important setting as this is what will allow you to calculate exactly how much money you're dumping into your devices to help you save monthly. The average person in the United States pays around 12 cents per kilowatt, so that's what we will be setting today. To set the rate, just hold the cost button for 3 seconds and then use the meter button for down and the save 2 button for up. After that, you're good to go. Now, let's take advantage of modifying the settings for the motion sensor. This area has multiple settings, so here we go. You'll be able to set its range, standby time, standby power usage, and if you want to turn it off completely. To modify any of these features, hold down the meter button for 3 seconds. You'll first be met with a flashing letters STBY, which means standby. If you hit plus or minus, you'll see the flashing letters POER. This stands for power kill mode. Only use this mode if you want the power to be cut to the device after no activity has been in an area for the respective time, regardless if it is on or off. We'll go over this completely later. So let's first focus on standby mode. So select that and hit enter. Here you will see the standby power usage setting. Before you set this, you'll need to figure out how much power your devices are using whilst in standby. To see this, just turn all of your devices off but do not unplug them. You'll want to set this number around a watt or two higher than your number, as electricity always fluctuates as you can see by the standby power from the bottom number. You can set this option anywhere from 0.1 to 1980 watts. After you've entered your value, hit enter. Here you'll see it, the time. This time is the delay for when the meter will power off to your products. So if you have the time set to 10 minutes, that means 10 minutes after there is no activity in the area, it will shut off. You can set this option anywhere from 10 seconds to 2 hours. Lastly, hit enter. This is where you will set the range for the motion sensor or if you want it off completely. You can set this anywhere from 1 to 15 feet. To conclude this section, it means that it shuts power off to your devices completely if the wattage is between 0 and X, and if there is no activity after X amount of minutes. Here is a common situation people would think of. Let's say you're using this for your computer, and you want to do an overnight download. Even though the area may be inactive for 8 or 9 hours, power will not be cut off to your PC because the PC's power on wattage exceeds that of its standby wattage, so you've got nothing to worry about. Now let's move on to the power kill mode. As before, you'll want to hold the meter button for 3 seconds and then hit plus or minus followed by enter. Here you'll be met with a time setting. This is the amount of time it will take for the power to be cut to the devices after there is no activity in a given area. You can set this time anywhere from 10 seconds to 12 hours. Hit enter once you've done that. Then you can set the range for the motion sensor. If you turn this off completely, then power will never be cut, and your device will always be powered. Moving on to the CO2 section, I'm not quite sure many people will really look into this section, 
but I'll go over it anyways. You can set the CO2 rate for pounds or kilograms. To do this, hold the CO2 button for three seconds and then use the up or down arrows to select pounds or kilograms. Pick the one you want and hit enter and then set the rate. After that, hint enter. If you ever need to reset the device to its defaults, hold the CO2 and cost buttons at the same time for three seconds and then select yes or no followed by enter. Now that we've covered the entire product, let me know if you have any questions in the comments section below. I'll leave a link to this product in the description if you want to check it out. Anyways, that is pretty much going to complete this video. Uh, if you've got any feedback for me, please leave some in the comment section below. I love feedback. Feedback's amazing. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching.